everyone welcome back to the channel so another video on the Volkswagen up the first video got a really good response thank you very much for all the views and the likes and comments so today's video I'm going to start off by removing the wing mirror then we'll get on to the rear bumper door and the suspension watch the last video on the Volkswagen up I showed you about the driver's wing mirror held together with black gaffer tape obviously I didn't see this on the Copart photos I do have a replacement uh, from Synetic in body colour. Oh, I'll get it out in a second, £35. But basically, I just want to take this gaff tape off, see what damage it's hiding. And then we'll get this removed and put the new one on. So that's the mirror cover off now. The actual mirror and the base itself, it's not loose, it's all sturdy, even the indicator's working. It wasn't just black tape holding this together, it's also sellotape in three spots, as you can see it's split in three places. So I've just had a quick look. Obviously I haven't looked, I haven't taken this off before, I wanted to do it on camera, that's why I just ordered a complete mirror. Um, this mirror, you could have saved this, you could have got a replacement mirror cover. Uh, but to be honest, the end of the indicator just here has got a scuff and the housing. It's not cracked or anything, you can just see scuffs. But me being anal when rebuilding all these cars, you know, they have to be spot on, you know, showroom conditions. So, as you know, I bought a new one from Synetic. And it is, as described, it is a clean mirror. For £35, you can't complain. So the tools you need to change the wing mirror on a Volkswagen up trim removal tool which is plastic and a T45 torque. So on this, get the trim tool and it's clipped all the way around. Just be careful because obviously the hole where the adjustment lever. You've got one plug which is for the what, alarm and mobiliser light. That just pulls out. And what you want to do with this one, just give it a little twist and then it will pull. That's that off. You've got a metal uh, retaining, kind of like a, a nut. They're just hand tight. I won't fully take that off just yet. Two T45 torques, one just here and there's one down here. So I'm just gonna undo them now. the replacement mirror all installed now and working so what I'm going to do now I'm going to get the rear bumper removed so I've already got the car and axle stands and both rear wheels removed so I'm going to to get the bumper off I'm going to start with removing the rear lights they're held in by one of these plastic nuts and one wiring connector either light so and then they just pull out once you've got them out there's t25 torque screws going along here and then underneath you'll have these pl plastic clips with a Torx T15 screw going through that just expands this clip out. So there's two of them, one just here and one here. Also, you'll have a T25 Torx bolt going through here either side. And then the remaining bolt to hold this bumper on, there'll be a Torx, I'm sure it's a T25, going through here, but I'm just gotta take the arch liner out either side of the car. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. I just thought I'd let you know what tools you need. So 
one is now removed. And just to let you know, it was one T25 torque screw that goes through here and straight into the bumper bracket. So from here to here just clips in and then one screw. They're removed either side now. So I'm gonna get the phone on the tripod from the back of the car, get the lights out and the remaining torque screws. Now we've got the bumper off, we can clearly see there is no damage hiding behind the bumper, which is great news. These harnesses here, that one's the harness for the rear fog lights, and these are for the number plate bulbs. So the first two jobs is now done. Next job will be to remove the damage suspension on the passenger side. So what I've just quickly done off camera, I've just slackened off the dry shaft hub nut. That's a 12.32 millimeter socket. So I'll quickly get it on an axle stand off camera and then we can start removing the suspension. So I'm gonna put on time lapse removing the suspension, but I just wanted to talk through the tools if you're gonna do this job yourself, what you need. So as I said, it was a 32 millimeter 12 point socket. Uh, the disc retaining screw, that's a Torx T30. Then the caliper bolts, you take the dust cover off, you've got one top and one bottom. Uh, they are seven millimeter hex. It doesn't have a carrier, that is, this is part of the hub. The anti-roll bar link, the nuts is 16 millimeter. The track red end nut is 18 millimeter. This can vary if the car's already had um, aftermarket replacements because they tend to either be 18 or they can be different size nuts. But if it's genuine items, 18 millimeter. Uh, the nut for the track red end, this end is 21 millimeter. The spanner which you put in this area, that's a 13 millimeter on the tie rod you can clearly see how bent that is now. So that bit's done. The suspension arm bolts, that's an 18 millimeter. The one at the back is also an 18 millimeter. I'm not removing the ball joint bolts because I'm re replacing the whole leg, so I'm just gonna remove it as one unit. If you did need to know, they are a 16 millimeter. And then you've got one at the top, that's a 21 millimeter socket. So I think that is pretty much it. You've got one uh, retaining clip for the brake hose and the ABS sensor, that's just on a rubber grommet that will pull towards you. So I'm gonna get on time-lapse, but yeah, that's the tools you need. So here's the original suspension, uh, the replacement wishbone, that's flat on the floor. And the original, look at the state of that. Same as the tie rod. That tie rod should look like this one. So I went to Auto Spares Breakers. I've used them many a times. They're in between Northampton and Wellingborough. Um, they had a Volkswagen up with rear damage. That was a 18 plate with 12,000 miles. So this car has got 17,000 miles. This come off a car, it come off the car while I was there. Uh, I think I did say in the A3, normally I don't buy second hand items because on eBay you could buy a leg, a picture of just all this stuff. You don't know if it's come off a crash damaged car on that corner. But as it was rear damaged, they removed it while I was there. That's why I've had this stuff. As you can see, well, the hubs, they go like that anyway, because they're cast, as you can see. But the rest of the parts, really good condition. So I've got replacement bolts from TPS, as all the suspension arm bolts, they are stretch bolts. So I've got all bolts, the hub nut, new tie rod end nut, 
and the anti-roll bar link nut. So I'm going to get all these fitted onto the car. So the shock absorber is now fully torqued up to the car. It's 60 newton meters for the nut on top that goes through the strut tower. And I just want to go through the rest of the torque specs for the complete suspension. Also, I have got all new bolts and nuts replacement genuine for the rest of the suspension. Uh, that's the old stuff. I've got a brand new um, dry shaft nut as well. I've just put loosely on. Uh, we'll torque that up when the car's on the floor with the full weight. So we'll go through the torque specs. So the wishbone bolt on the front of the front of the car, that's 70 newton meters with 180 degrees. The bolt that goes through the back of the arm, um, you don't torque up the nut, you torque up the bolt. That's 70 newton meters with 90 degrees. Uh, the ball joint bolt, uh, nuts, the three here, they're 40 newton meters with 45 degrees. Anti roll bar link nuts, they're 40 newton meters. If you, this ball joint was already on the shock, so I have double checked when it was off the car, it's 60 newton meters as it should be. But yeah, if you're gonna do the ball joint, that uh, nut's 60 newton meters. What else? I've already told you the strut tower nut, that's 60 newton meters. Right, dry shaft nut. So that's a 12 point socket, 32 millimeter. When it's on the ground, you've got to tighten it to 200 newton meters. This, I'm just going by what it states in the workshop manual. So tighten it to 200 newton meters, then uh, loosen it, which turn it back 180 degrees and re-tighten to 50 newton meters plus 45 degrees. Yeah, so that's all the torque specs for the front suspension all gone over. Uh, those torque specs are the same for a Skoda City Go and a Say It Me as they are the same car. If you wanna know where I get my torque specs for the cars I rebuild, I buy Genuine Workshop uh, PDF manuals from Easy Manuals, which are 15 pound. You go on the website, you can pay through PayPal, pay the 15 pounds, they'll send you an email with a link what you click on, and then you can save it to your phone, any devices like an iPad, or you know, laptop for example. But yeah, I hope the worst case, if you don't wanna buy them yourself, if you're doing this job, you've got to talk specs on this video. I hope that helps. Also, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put some jacket up from underneath the suspension, just to put a bit of load on it, so I can uh, talk up all the bolts to factory spec. So the little up's now on the ground on its new suspension. As you know, all the suspension now is replaced and all torqued up to spec. Uh, another good bit of news, if you remember on the first video, maybe the beginning of this video, that wheel was sitting all the way back to, to the sill. That's what damaged uh, the end of the sill, as you can see. Uh, the body shop's gonna repair that, but good news, we've got a perfect gap now. Obviously this is gonna need tracking done as we've replaced everything. For now, I uh, with the original track rod end and the replacement, I just kind of eyeballed it just for temporary until we get the tracking done. Uh, and the only reason I've got the space saver wheel on, if you remember the first video, I found out the original wheel was damaged on the inside. I'm still waiting for the replacement to arrive. By the way, I haven't sourced a door yet. So in this video, I'm not gonna remove this door on this video. We've done suspension, we've removed the rear bumper and we've replaced the driver's wheel. Oh, the first wing. episode of the Volkswagen app, I did clearly state this is gonna be a short series. 
So the next episode on the car, the car's going to be finished, panelled up, it's painted, tracking done, new MOT, service, car will be finished. Also, I have bought a new car. I uh, bought it last week. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen it. I posted a few stories of the car. Uh, by the way, my Instagram's Nathan underscore Hiley. So if you didn't see it, you're going to have to wait for the video of it. So the car's a Category S, but honestly, it's the easiest salvage I've ever bought. Uh, there's not going to be enough. The car's already repaired. I've only had it a week. Uh, when I say repaired, the damage why it was written off. The car was here. It's not at the minute. It's gone to my friends to have the cam belt done as it's low mileage. It's only got 34,000 miles. It's a 66 plate vehicle, but the age of the car, the belt's due. Uh, I don't have the timing tools. My friend does, so give him the job. So what I'm going to do, there's not enough. I don't think there's enough stuff to do on that car to do a complete video just for that car. So my plan is on one of the next videos, I'll do a longer video. Right, so the plan, I've just made this plan up now. So the plan is, I'm gonna post this video at first, which then gives me time to edit the Audi A3 interior video altogether. But personally, I didn't think that was gonna be a long enough video. When I say long enough, 15 to 20 minutes. As that one, it was an interior video, start to finish. But as you know, it, there weren't a dashboard or anything gone off. It was only two curtain airbags, which I need to remove the headliner to get to them, two front seat belts and a driver's seat. But now I've bought this uh, other car that is the easiest salvage I've ever had. And there weren't gonna be enough footage, stuff that I can do on that video for that car, which means you're gonna get interior fully done and then you're gonna get a new car start to finish on one video so hopefully you're going to enjoy that video let us know what you thought to today's video and if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing and if you did like today's video smash that like button as it really does help with the youtube algorithm also if you need to get uh, in contact with me either on instagram which is nathan underscore highly or the dedicated email address for the channel is nathan underscore highly at outlook.com thanks again for watching guys and thank you for everyone that has subscribed to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.